Here at the Royal Society, there are lots of busts of famous scientists. For example, Isaac Newton, Joseph Banks, and Charles Darwin. And one thing you may be noticing is that most of the people here are men. But times have changed and science has changed. And that's something they're trying to reflect here at the Royal Society with some new bits of artwork around the place. And this is one of the latest. Keith? It is. What is this? Who is this? This is Lucy Green. This is a scientist, a university research fellow for the Royal Society. And this is a, a rather fantastic thing, I think. We decided we wanted portraits of, of young female scientists, role models for future generations. And uh, therefore, we got a short list of candidates that our officers uh, approved. And then the sculptor, Marcus Cornish, decided that he wanted to do Lucy Green. Tell me a bit about this piece of art and how it sort of ties in with what Dr. Green does. There have been many busts based upon the legend of Clytie. Clytie, a nymph, is captured by Apollo. She falls in love with the sun, Helios, and her gaze follows the sun around the sky. So you can see how this fits in with a solar physicist. And you can see also there are sunflower seeds here that Lucy is holding because eventually the nymph was turned into a, a, a sunflower. Tell people what you think. Does, does it look like her? I think it's a terrific likeness. It's a strong sculpture. It's an interesting, direct work of art. Uh, and I really enjoy it. We've got a bit of a surprise for you now because you can judge for yourself if it's a good likeness because Dr. Green's over here. <laughs> How are you? Look at this, the white I've gloves. I've come equipped. The yeah. white gloves. There's absolutely no reason for you to be wearing the white gloves other than its objectivity. Do you want to stand next to yeah, it and let so people have I a... try and get the... See if you can... Pose. How many times do you think you've had your picture taken with this? Well, on the night when they unveiled it, it was quite a lot of fun. It felt like the paparazzi were there. It was actually my family and my friends, but it's always great to be photographed next to it. I think it's a good likeness. I recognise myself in it. It seems like a huge honour to be in the corridor of the Royal Society, like... I think when I got contacted by Keith, first of all, I didn't really think it through. I just thought, oh, that sounds really fun, a different thing to do, and especially since I wanted to be an artist when I left school. And I just thought engaging with an artist on a project like this would be something that sort of harked back to something inside me that I still kind of want to do. But then the magnitude of it only really settled in when it was unveiled. And I mean, I'm absolutely thrilled that it's here. And also I think it's important to do it because I'm quite often out there telling young women, push yourself forward, you know, don't sit back and let other people do the things you want to do, you do them yourself. What did you have to do to this, for this to happen? <laughs> it was absolutely no work on my part at all. So I went to see the artist or he came to my um, laboratory, which is just outside of Guildford. And first of all, he started by making little sketches, which I hadn't really appreciated when you're doing a sculpture. I mean, when you're drawing, you can do little quick sketches, but he did the same in clay and just these very quick models. And then I started to go to his studio in Sussex and I got to sit there in the countryside. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful. And in fact, I used the opportunity to do some writing. So he'd be working and, and I would be writing. But I, I do like it. There's something very sort of earthy about it. And I think it adds really nice tones and, and nice shades of red. How important do you think it is to see more women depicted in these corridors? Does it make a difference whose picture's on the wall or are they just pictures on a wall? Does it matter? I think it does matter. I think they're stories. And certainly when I walk around buildings um, like the Royal Society or even when I'm at work at UCL, I use the decorations that are around the building to tell stories about the place. And if you don't have a good diverse range of people who've been involved, you, you don't even get the opportunity to tell those stories. They get left behind. I know you've posed for thousands of pictures in front of this. Will you do one more for us? Of course. <laughs> Let's do it. Go okay. on, James. You get a nice still. <laughs> This is a silver gilt ceremonial mace. It was presented to the Royal Society by King Charles II, who was our first patron, and it dates from 1663. So if you think that the Royal Society began in 1660 and had its first meetings in November of that year, this mace has been with the organization for most of its history. And its function is to stand in for the patron, 